Now, in 2003, so I was going in and out of MIT, something quite fascinating occurs, um, is that uh, this graph, what it shows is in 1993, about, about 1990, this is a graph of how many genes are in the human body, genes. You see 1990, people thought um, we had about 100,000 genes. Why? Because a worm only had around 20,000 genes. So we thought a human being's more complex. But as the genome project went to hunt for genes, you find out by 2003, we only have 20,000 genes. We have the same number of genes as a worm, okay? So think about what I'm saying. You have the same number of genes as a worm, okay? So this completely flipped biology on its head because people realized that just because you have more parts, this uh, that didn't mean your complexity wasn't a function of the number of genes, number of parts. Complexity is a function of the interconnections. Human beings have a lot more interconnections between ourselves, between the genes and the proteins. And so this led into a field called systems biology in 2003, which said, if you're going to understand the whole human being, which is over on this side, right, you have to understand not only the genes, but the cells, but more importantly, you have to go outside of the cell and we need to start looking at all the molecular reactions in the cell. And this is a molecular reaction, a little bunch of molecules interacting. But if we could connect all those together, you could literally solve every disease. You could go at the molecular systems level, um, uh, you could do that. So this is 2003, in 1993, I had started my PhD in a field called um, AI, what you would call it, and left to go start this company. So 10 years later, a lot of my professors at MIT are, Shiva, you gotta come back and finish your PhD. And they said, look, you've always loved systems. You've loved medicine. We need people like you to put this together. Imagine if we could create a mathematical model of the entire human body or the cell on the computer, all right? And that is what I decided to do. Email was the entire inner office mail system on the computer. And this is a lot more complex, the entire molecular system. So that's what I, so I came back to MIT at the age of uh, 40, okay? I had to take all my qualifying exams again while I was actually running this other company. Um, and what I ended up doing was I created a technology where I, uh, and I'm not gonna get into details, but I created a technology called Cytosol. If email was the electronic version of the inner office mail system, Cytosol is the electronic version of the entire human cellular system. And with Cytosol, we can eliminate the need for animal testing, which is what we've done. Uh, and this, and that, and that I made that into a company. Um, this was 15 years ago. I had to write papers. And by the way, this is the way pharmaceutical companies develop drugs. It takes them 16 years. The drugs have all sorts of side effects. And this is the way that I can discover medicines from guess what? From natural compounds in nature. So my grandmother used to mix all these ingredients to heal you, but no one could explain why. With Cytosol now, I can explain why and also discover new medicines, okay? And over the last 16 years, we've written all the scientific papers, we validated it, and actually Cytosol um, deserves to explosively grow. And, um, and I've done all the work now, we validate it, and we're going to go raise a big fund to do that. And we want to go after every disease out there. So just like you build an airplane on the computer, you don't just throw pilots, that's what Cytosol is. So we've created an entire technology to do that. So um, so that's what you know my journey was, and that's still what I do you know, in, in the real world. And I'm not going to walk you through all the things that Cytosol can do, but I'll give you a simple example, um, and this will sort of help you understand this, is this is where the East and West, this is sort of in honor to my grandmother in many ways. So I'll give you an example of what Cytosol can do. So if you think in the ancient times, um, they would mix stuff together, right? But how did they do that? So with Cytosol, we're able to take any disease now. So if you look at inflammation, I can mathematically model inflammation on the computer. Curcumin is the active ingredient in curry, right? In turmeric, the yellow herb. We can take that and we can literally find all the chemical pathways and mathematically understand how much curcumin 
you need to reduce inflammation. If you look at, if you drink wine, the, the, the red skin of grapes is called resveratrol. Now, if you're going to put them together, how do you do it? Well, many of the vitamin products, people just throw stuff together. They don't even know why. But with our technology, we're able to actually model it. So I can simulate inflammation on the computer. So on the far right, 0.15, let's assume that's a high level of inflammation. I don't give any curcumin and resveratrol. Then I just give curcumin, you notice it goes down from 0.15 to 0.05. Then I just give resveratrol and then I can combine both. But you notice that when I give less curcumin from five to three, less resveratrol, you get much more response. This is called the synergistic effect. So in ancient systems of medicine, we always combine things, right? If you look at curry powder, it's not any one ingredient, it's a bunch of them put together, okay? So systems of medicine, you know how to do combinations. So you don't give this much medicine of something, you give a lot of little things and they reduce toxicity and you have more effect. So our technology is able to do that across every disease now, all right? So that's over here. Now, something interesting occurred after I did all this work in 2009, I went back to India because now I had all the degrees, right? No one could say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. And with all these degrees, I decided to go back to India um, and I wanted to really understand um, how my grandmother was able to do that, right? I wanted to figure this out. So if you think about the world of medicine, this is what, if you're a Western trained uh, professional, this is how, a medical professional, this is how you learn what the body is, right? Genes and proteins, but this is how my grandmother learned it. So I was curious, what's the bridge, right? Because both people are looking at the body. So I ended up getting a scholarship. This is uh, 2007 to go back to India. And what I discovered was that the entire systems of Indian medicine, right, um, are a one-to-one -one match with engineering systems. By the way, there's some feedback here, Ole. I don't know if you hear that. I know someone sh um, should mute themselves. So what I learned, this was in my Fulbright, that here is the engineering world. And here is the world of Indian medicine. And no one had ever connected the both. You see, the world of engineering has these nine principles. The world of Siddha and Ayurveda, and you can use different terms in Chinese medicine as these. So I was able to interconnect these and I published this in an engineering systems journal. So you see the ancient yogis and rishis were looking at the body as a system. They just use different words. And so I had uncovered this deep way to understand that the engineering world, the world of Indian medicine, and the world of politics were all together. And then when I got back, I put together an entire system called Your Body, Your System that anyone could use to become their own doctor, okay? Literally. So, um, and then we put all of this into a very powerful program that we call Truth, Freedom, Health. And all of you should go through that program because I used to teach system science at MIT. When I got back, I taught that at MIT to only the elites. And then I realized that the knowledge of system science is really the way out of all of this oppression and to liberation. That when you understand system science, you have the scientific framework to understand how the world operates. So you start thinking beyond left or right. But without that framework, we're never gonna achieve any type of liberation. Just like without the ideas that came out in the 1700s, that were the ideas that compelled the American Revolution. So what I had uncovered was a fundamentally different way to look at the world. And, um, and I encourage everyone to do that. Now, so when I got back from discovering all of this, I'm teaching a class at MIT. We have uncovered this stuff. Cytosol is going. Something interesting happens. In 2011, my mom is dying of a horrible disease called pulmonary fibrosis. Someone has three months to live, basically. She never told me, unfortunately. And three months before she dies, she, in a suitcase, she gives me all the work that I had done back in 1978. 